Endo. 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 What is that microscope? What is all these details that are going on? Stay tuned as we talk to a doc that just got into Endo program at one of the top schools in the U.S. Stay tuned and listen out how he did it. Hey guys, it's Dr. Darwin, the new dentist coach, another episode of Ask Dr. Darwin on the new dentist podcast show. We talk about getting into dental school, get uh, surviving dental school, getting into residency, surviving residency, and then life as a new dentist. Guys, please, please be sure that you share, that you like, that you comment, and better yet, subscribe. But share, sharing is caring. Share this information that you're learning from the podcast and on, and on the YouTube channel and share with your friends. Uh, do them the justice that you're getting and the benefit that you're getting from watching these podcasts that's helping so many people from Canada, US, South America, Japan, Philippines, Nepal, Africa, India. Need I go on? Uh, also, this episode is being sponsored by GetIntoDentalResidency.com right here. Get into dentalresidency.com, the ultimate uh, resource to help you get in and match at your program. That's right, match. Get into dental residency, match your program right now, this cycle, not next cycle, but this cycle. All right. Uh, for more details, go down below and find out uh, some more information on how we can help you get to that uh, match in that in that cycle. So today we're going to be talking about endo. Uh, a, a specialty that not many go into, but those that go into it find out how it's really detail-oriented. Uh, it's probably one of the top three most evidence-based specialties in dentistry. Uh, but today we're and and today we're we're uh, blessed to be able to talk to a, a doc who just got in. Uh, to endo residency. So today we're joined with Dr. Nicholas, all the way from Canada. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. What about you? Man, not as good as you. You got into endo, brother. That's great. That's Thank great. You. So Thank you. You're welcome. So please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself for those uh, that are meeting you for the first time. Sure. Um, so I'm Dr. Nicholas Wellett. Um, I graduated from dental school at, at McGill University in Montreal, Canada. Um, I'm 26. I'm French Canadian. Um, so I'm a hockey fan. I, uh, I'm a hockey fan. And, um, right now I'm, you know, I'm a little bit this, I'm, a, um, I'm sorry. Um, English, English is my second language. I'm babbling a little bit. Uh, I just wanted to, I just want to say I'm finishing my, I'm finishing a master's degree right now on, uh, on opiate research and uh, an addiction and chronic pain so that's what brought me to it's one of the reasons that it brought me to in, into endodontics in the first place because this is where the research is going out to manage pain both operative pre-operative yeah it's um, big to be yeah, big I'll, big, oh, big uh, opioid epidemic here in the u.s uh and also come to find out that dentists are probably in the top i don't know top four top five might even be top three of those prescribers that are yeah exactly you know, so, opioids so especially for pain especially for <laughs> tooth pain right yeah exactly <laughs> um so we're we're looking at different ways to uh to manage the to manage these uh, these patients without using opioids and all that stuff so i'm finishing i'm actually writing my thesis right now i'm going to be graduating in may um, and then I'm, I would be, I will be off to, to Boston to study endodontics, uh, at Harvard, um, nice, under, nice. yeah, under Jennifer Gibbs, uh, um, uh, stewardship. So yeah, yeah, I'm re yeah, really looking forward to it. That's great, man. So look, let's brush it up. Let's dive in right now. Cause this is one of those specialties that people really want to learn how to navigate, to get to, uh, and yeah. we're talking again, we're talking about endo. So endo. Why endo? Out of all the disciplines, you mentioned oral surgery. We mentioned, uh, yeah. you know, pedo is very popular right now. Ortho is very popular as well. Why? Why endo for you? Because um, 
I always like the like the odd job if if you want to look at it that way. Like um, I find there's something very appealing uh, in endodontics. Like you look, it's always like the smallest detail that you're looking at. You work through a microscope. You you always it's not always like the most evident thing. It's really based on like the, the diagnostic approach is very different from um, from any other specialty. I, at least that's, you know, that's my, that was my opinion. Like there, it's very, and it's also very structured. Like you have to go through all of these steps in order to make the proper diagnose, uh, diagnostic. You have these, uh, the different imaging technique, comb beams, CT, your radiograph, uh, every like it's it's always it's always moving it's always an evo uh, evolving but there's also um there's also a big space that's uh, that's taken by the, by the older approach that's also that's still very relevant like uh warm vertical come warm ver vertical obturation still being used and it was developed in the 60s um but there's but you know it's it's moving in the, i think it's moving in the right direction and I, if if I can help someone keep their their natural tooth for another ten years before they have to resort for, to an implant, then that's that's what I want to do. Yeah. So yeah. So, so yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was gonna say, and that's that's uh that's typically been the the vernacular now as far as uh, how endodontists, general dentists, are really trying to help more people save their tooth, right? Um, yeah. You know, just because it doesn't hurt or if it does hurt, you know, don't resort to <laughs> uh, medieval times where you just take the tooth out. Just take exactly. it out. Take it yeah. out. Take it out, Doc. No, I don't want to save it. Take it out. It's going to cost more money. No, it's going to cost you <laughs> even more if you take it out. <laughs> yeah. No. Plus, uh, you want to keep you want to try to keep the PDL intact as much as possible. So uh, there's, you know, there the more and more research we do we do we see that there's a lot of impacts uh, related to that so um it's, it was really the field for me i'm i'm a really detail oriented person so yeah. it was like that's that's really what i found yeah, i found detail. it really appealing detail you you talking about detail oriented yeah yeah just wait wait in july when you have to go through the, all those uh uh, those lit reviews and i'm and i'm sure when you met with some of the residents up at up at harvard uh I, well you already know you're doing some research yourself but yeah uh, wait to those I've, lit reviews <laughs> I've, about I've details been, <laughs> i've been doing research since my second year of under of my first undergrad so i've been in research my whole life at university so i know what it is yeah yeah and it's and it's important uh and it's an important muscle to exercise um because it has so many benefits for the profession right i mean no, I everything agree. everything that you're going to be doing as an endo resident is going to be based off of evidence and research that was done years yeah. and years ago and some of the new research that's out there right now right yeah. uh and i think that's another reason why a lot of people are attracted to endo um, because of that research component, but also because of the details, uh, but also just being able to save something for a person, namely their tooth versus, you know, oh, my leg hurts, just cut it off. No, we're not going to do that. Don't do this. <laughs> That's not the mentality. You wouldn't do that, uh, you know, for your other body parts. So let's not do it for your tooth. Right. No, exactly. So, um, you know, one of the things that many people when they are getting ready for this opportunity have to do is they've got to prepare their application. So talk a little bit yeah. about um, those steps that you took to prepare your application. And it sounds like it started, really, it started second year dental school. Yeah. Yeah. So um, after a couple of introductory classes where um, basically all the, the specialists were coming in and they were talking about the specialty and all that, uh, and all that stuff. The, the, basically, the way the program was constructed at McGill, it's like you, you do you do one year and a half of general medicine with the medical students, and then after you get into the uh, like the, the thick of it, if you want, it's more uh, it's more den dental or it's more dental oriented, starting the middle of second year. So you have all the 
um, all the specialists that come in and give you your 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 classes about fundamentals of dentistry and um right after the the class the, the couple of classes we had on endodontics it really sparked my interest because i thought that it was so the approach was so different compared to the other specialty that i was really intrigued so um in the summer between second year and third year i I shadowed uh, the endodontic program at uh, in the University of British Columbia, and I also shadowed at the uh, University of Michigan during that summer. Uh, then after that, during third year, I went. I shadowed at Columbia University, then at Harvard. Then I went back uh, in Vancouver because um, I really liked the program over there, and because I was in Canada, I thought I would be. Uh, easier to get in i don't have to get a student visa and all that stuff but um after talking with a couple of friends at Harvard, all that i realized that maybe harvard would be the better match for what i wanted to do um so so basically that's all the shadowing i that's all the shadowing that i did i did some shadowing uh, in montreal various anotic clinics uh and um, and basically starting, starting at the end of third year, that's where, that's where I really, I started gathering more evidence, more, uh, more things for my CV and, you know, writing, writing, uh, writing applications, essays. I tried to apply, uh, in, I tried to apply in Canada, but there's no spots. It was with COVID. It was difficult to send your, uh, all your requirements, getting in touch with schools to send your transcripts. So it really didn't work out. But then after, after that, in fourth year, after fourth year, um, that's when I decided to apply in the U.S. Uh, so I had my, I did my U.S. boards, the 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 new one the, where it's it's only one step basically, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I just and I sent every and I sent everything in as soon as the uh, ADAT uh, website would open. So I I was done with. Everything, uh, three recommendation letter. Everything was done the day that it opened, as because um, I knew that uh, and just, that endo doesn't take doesn't really take part in the match system. Right, right. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah they they're not part of match, and the application cycle is super early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So like. Um, June, July. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, you really have to, um, like, you really have. It's like it's during. The, it's basically it's during the summer. So if you wait until until the ADAT website opens to ask your your tutors and your mentors for recommendation letter, forget about it. Forget you, you, about it. Yeah. No, you're you're done. Um, yeah. So, so I really got. I started early. Um, Gathering all, gathering everything, asking for recommendation letters. You really have to be on top of everything um, because because <laughs> um, because you just have to. They they don't uh, they don't respect the the timeline that's that's posted on the website. Yeah, it's quick and it's quick. It and it happens it's really. Quick. You know, it's endo, really quick. Endo does not play. Endo no. does not play. And and you um, mentioned something that I think those that are watching and listening need to know, it sounded like you had a a specific plan related to shadowing. Yeah. That really, really seemed to be beneficial. I mean, you mentioned like four programs, BC Columbia, University of Michigan, Columbia University uh, in, in, in New York and Harvard. Yeah. You're going to be going to. So, ha- like, how did you know about that? Like, did someone mention it to you? Did some of the professors at McGill say, hey, if you're thinking about specializing, especially endo, shadow, and, and as part of your application preparation, like, how did you go about getting those shadowing opportunities? Because that's key. Yeah. So, um, so that's thanks to you. Uh, I watched your video, um, <laughs> like the the one that you made like five years ago about how to like the seven steps how to apply to endodontics, um, and you put a lot of emphasis on like oh going to the AAE meetings or or getting connections, 
Um, and I, I don't want to like, I know that it sounds like I'm brown nosing right now, but uh, it, like it's, it's really helped me because uh, connection is key. Um, and I think that's for any programs, uh, yeah. any, any specialty programs, connection is key because um, grades, um, grades are kind of taking a back seat because yeah. most schools now are going pass or pass fail. fail. So, so unless, yep. yeah. and, and everybody, all the candidates that are applying to Endo, guess what? Everyone's got a three, eight, a three, nine. Yeah, exactly. A three, seven, you know, so it's like, okay, that's not so, going to differentiate. No. Know? So, so it, that was one of the other thing that I noticed when I like, especially when you get into dental school, everybody's great. Everybody has good grades. Um, so unless you, so if you're in a pass or fail school, the only way of like being above the others when it terms in terms of grades is it's to win an award. Right. But when the awards are played, like when, when the play between getting the award and not getting the award is like 0.2% on a 90 on a 98% grade or, or whatever, wh how do you want to spend your time? Do you, do you prefer to spend your time going shadowing or studying like the 10 hours more in order to get that 0.2%. I prefer to, I prefer to go shadowing. I think I'm that, that was my efforts were better placed that way. Yeah. And, and let me ask you, as far as your letters of recommendation, were you able to get letters from alumni from not, well, not only alumni, but more specifically, I'm thinking more with the people that you shadowed with. Was there anyone that was yep. able to write you? So you also got LORs from them, right? Yeah. So I got letters of recommendation, um, not, not necessarily from people in the program, but people that did go to the program. So alumni that, uh, that did go to the, to the various school where I applied, um, I, I did get recommendations. I did get recommendations later. I got Good. lucky because one of the um, endodontic uh, endodontists that I shadowed in Montreal was actually a Harvard alumni, but he was also a teacher over there. Mm. And I found that out when I spoke to him, like on the phone, and when I went to shadow him at this clinic. I didn't know. I like that's a pure stroke of luck, but sometimes things happen like that. Like yeah. the planets, the planets align, and it just works out. The endo um, planets, the endo yeah. files, the endo files align from Canada to the U.S. and all of that. Yeah, but so I, I got lucky. I got lucky there, but um, on um, obviously, if you can have someone that's in the program vouch for you by writing you a recommendation yeah, letter, key. so that's key. that's great. But so key. Yeah, the endo program. So you guys, you're listening and watching. It's a tip. The endo program directors want to hear from other endodontists about you, especially if you've had a chance to work with them on some research yeah. or something similar to that, which, which leads me to, you know, how you came up with your list of programs. I mean, you mentioned uh, four programs already that have endo programs. Yeah. How did you, just tell us about your process of of selecting of choosing? schools, choosing yeah. schools, and why. Sure. You chose so those schools too. So I I thought about what I wanted out of my endodontic training. I I knew I, I know I, I wanted to practice, uh, but at the same time I do like research. I do like what I'm doing right now, and I want to keep doing research. So I knew that the a two year uh, certificate program is not what I was looking for if it's what you're if it's what you're looking for you only want to open a practice and do root canals in complex and complex cases go for a two-year program they're good for that if you want to teach or do research then maybe look at the four-year DMSC which is what I'm going to be doing or look at the three-year masters um, you know so that's that's really that's what's or, oriented my main choices so um so i chose a, a school where i could do a four-year program because i'm interested in teaching and and also opening maybe a private practice and and make, do a little bit of everything um and then i chose programs on the east coast because 
closer to it's closer to Montreal. Um, so if I want to fly, if I want to fly back home or drive back home, it's a possibility. So, yep. um, so I, on my second round of applications, I didn't apply in Canada at all because there was, uh, it's only Toronto and, Van- and in Vancouver where there are programs. Um, and there was only six, six places in the whole of Canada for end of, for end of the office. So I didn't, I didn't feel like, uh, I didn't feel like applying applying there for a second time, so I decided to start fresh and only apply in the U.S. So I apply at uh, Harvard, Boston, Columbia, and Tuft University because um, in my shadowings, the, these were the four places where I had alumni that wrote a recommendations letter uh, for me, basically, and they were the programs where yeah. the, they were offering research and teaching opportunities. Uh, yep. yep. Makes oh, yeah. sense. And, also, and also Michigan, Michigan University, I also applied there because I visited. Yeah, you had to. Yeah, that was good. So yeah. so you applied to the programs, you got your list of programs, you applied to them. What about your interviews? Tell us a little bit. I, I already know. I think I already know. You probably got interviews of all five spots. No, actually, I, uh, well, I mean. What? Harvard, no. <laughs> I got an inter- I got an interview offer at the at the University of Michigan and at Harvard. Um, but because Harvard is the first one that interviewed me and it only took a week between the interview and getting my acceptance. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so it only took a week between getting the interview and getting my answer. So I and I, I, that was my, and I hadn't interviewed for anything else. And I didn't have any news on whether I was accepted for an, for, for an interview or anything. So I didn't want to jinx it. So I, I accepted the offer at, at Harvard. And then when I got the, the news that I got uh, an interview at Michigan University, I declined uh, to do the second, to do the second interview because um, I felt like, I would give my spot to maybe, to maybe somebody else, you know? Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that was very, very noble of you. Plus um, I'm not sure which one that ranked higher, but you know, again, with endo, because it's not necessarily a a straight traditional match. um, No, they participate out of match. You will get offers, uh, very very soon right within a couple of uh couple of uh, days if not a week or two so yeah exactly exactly so my my mindset was as if i get an interview that's great uh, and as soon as soon as i have an answer if it's a positive answer i'm i'm taking the first one basically obviously harvard being harvard it's the name it's prestige and all that so everybody knows you know everybody knows about it uh i went to visit the program uh i knew people that went there i know i knew teachers that were teaching there so obviously it was my first choice so it worked out perfectly um that way but i've been would have been really happy to get to any of the other universities because there are great programs as well for what i wanted to do yeah yeah so guys we already know it's harvard that's where he's going. Where is he? Where is that? He's going to Harvard. That crim- that crimson is going to be up in Boston. Up in Boston. Yeah. Just uh, probably, what, an hour away on a flight? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it's a short, it's a long-ish drive. Or yeah, airport yeah, flight. yeah. Congratulations, man. That's great. Thank you. That's great. You're going to be up there with, uh, I think I, we mentioned this before, um, before we started, which was you're going to be uh, one of the uh, going to have a classmate who's in a year ahead of you, Dr. Morgan Celestian, Celestian, yeah. Celestian, Celestian. She's uh, we talked to her last year uh, around this time when she got into Harvard and was talking about her process as well. So uh, so glad to, he- to hear that you guys are going to be training up there together up there at Harvard. Um, that's going to be great, man. So look, you know, people want to go to Harvard. 
They want to go to Michigan. They want to go to Tufts. They want to yeah. go to all these different places where there's endo programs. So you got to give them some advice. So knowing what you know, and this is your second time, right? You said this is your second cycle of going through um, mm -hmm. applying. Knowing what you know now and the fact that you've applied um, again well, this year. My, I mean, my first oh. cycle. My first cycle of applications, I only applied in Canada. So Canada, no, right. Yeah. So there is no match at all. You just go on the school website and you apply like if it was any other program, okay. uh, like a bachelor or any other master. So there's, uh, there isn't a, a lot of difference. Um, and you have first to time for the U.S., first time for yeah. the U.S. program. So knowing that, you know, the experience that you had in Canada, and then the second time you're like, well, I'm not going to do Canada. I'm just going to do U.S., focus on the U.S., U.S., U.S. Give us some tips, some advice for those that are listening, those that are watching, yeah, and those that are ready, ready to apply to Indo. Sure. Um, so the first was start as soon as soon as you know you want to go into endo and you want to apply to the cycle that's like the this year cycle or whatever year you, you've been applying start gathering your documents as soon as possible check um on the web on the various schools website uh what you need to gather because it's it's a little bit different uh, in every in every school, some schools they want you to send more documentation direct to their register. Some don't. Um, also, check if they use the ADAT um, the ADAT website because Michigan University doesn't. Um, Michigan University, you apply directly on their on their website, and if you come from outside of the United States, or even if you're inside the United States, they they want you to send all your transcripts to an evaluation firm that's going to then send it to uh, uh, to the Michigan uh, to the Michigan University evaluation board. So just pay attention to all of these little things. Start early and um, and start early, uh, especially for the for the recommendation uh, letters for the letters of recommendation. Yeah. So those those yeah, are my those tips. Are, those are, those are my tips. Yeah, for the for the application cycle. Um, the other thing is, is if I know that with COVID right now, uh, things are getting back to normal, but uh, there might be some restrictions in in different programs. But if you can go shadow, go shadow in the different programs. Meet the program directors. Talk to them in person. Um, but and and try to make an appointment by any means possible. I had to. I I called schools. You guys hear that? Any means possible. You yeah. got to get to the programs. You got to get some FaceTime. You yeah. got to get FaceTime. Yeah. Um. If you need to call their secretaries and leave a message, do it. Um. I I mostly emailed them directly, or emailed the the program directly. The like. I do directly the program director if their web if their email address is on the website you can email them directly that's what I did most times um, if it's not there you can call call the, the the dental faculty and they will give you their information now did did the program directors call you back or I mean email you back like how, how did that work for you yeah yeah they would uh, most of them they would email me back or um, they they would. Uh, they would tell their secretary to book an appointment with me in order to come and visit. Um, so all the, I sent basically emails to all the programs on, on the, on the, on the East coast. Um, and I, I only got, and I got five replies and that's the five schools where I went to visit. There it is guys, those tips, especially as it relates to shadowing. Because if you heard a theme here that Dr. Nicholas has been sharing is that the shadowing piece and how he arranged his shadowing experiences and opportunities gave him FaceTime, gave him the opportunity to meet some of the faculty members that some of the alumni of these programs that he already knew who had written letters of recommendation for him told him, you got to go shadow and getting into the door by any means possible. You got to do it. You yeah. know, it's easy. It sounds easy to do, but 
is also easy not to do. But you don't want to be in that second sentence. You want to be in the sentence where you're actually getting it done by any means uh, uh, possible. And I know this has been uh, been helpful. You get ready to say something else, Doc? Um, no, but I mean, what, what you just said, that's uh, that for me, that was the most that, that was the most important thing, because when I interviewed um, at Harvard, basically it was a whole day of interview of interviews that like that were I had seven pe seven people interviewed me like for 30 minutes and it was on the like uh it, and it lasted the whole day it was all done virtually um uh, but out of the seven people that were interviewing me I knew five of them because I met them in person wow so <laughs> I mean yeah. you're look by that time they know you already it's like hey doc Good to see you again. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, it was like, oh, you like did the apply. You did apply. I, I'm so glad you applied. I saw your name on the list, but I wasn't sure if it was the same person. Yada exactly. yada. Or, they already you know, know you, right? When, or when like you chat, when if you chat with the res, if you chat with the residents, they're like, oh, didn't you come last year to during a class or something during a seminar? We talked. We like we drank tea or or whatever because at at four o'clock at Harvard they always drink tea. It's something that they do or. Yeah. Um, yeah, whatever. So again, um, guys, this yeah. is the reason why shadowing is so important, especially now that uh, the pandemic and, and, and COVID restrictions are uh, have allowed things. people to move like we used to move before to, uh, 2019. So if you're if you're thinking about applying to Indo right now, you've got to got to shadow. And, and Doc, you mentioned about the interviews, any any particular questions that caught you off guard at all? Uh, no, well, I mean, I only did one. Yeah. Um, and I, I checked. I don't have any non-disclosure or, or anything, but uh, in general, but in general, they were pretty basic questions. Like they would, they would ask, like they would ask me. But it, it was basically to verify if everything that I said on my CV mm -hmm. was true. So they would ask me questions on my research or uh, what I was looking for. Why did you choose that school? So, you know, pretty basic, pretty basic questions. Um, and when I prepare for and when I prepare for interviews, I like to have like my the, the five basic questions all, you know, all prepared and, and ready to answer. But uh, so it's like. Um, a situation, a situation where you had to overcome something. What are your three biggest faults? What are your three biggest um, good points? Uh, why do you want to go to that school? Why did you choose? The, why did you choose uh, endodontics mm -hmm. or prost or whatever? Those are like the five questions that yeah, like all the schools that don't do an MMI type um, uh, interview that it's only like panel a panel or a one on one interview. They will probably ask you five questions are similar to this and for those that are listening and may not know what an mmi is what, what's an mmi yeah so the mmi that's the multiple mini interviews so those are more um like s s simulation of what you would encounter in the, uh in a day like it would either be as an endodontist or in a any other circumstances that would evaluate how you would behave in a given situation um, interview gotcha. in the, when you get into. So um, just look at what's the format of the interview that uh, if, if you get a letter of acceptance for an interview, just look what is the format because if it's an MMI type uh, of, of interview when you're they're going to ask you to act out a situation as, as if it was happening to you. Uh, so that's very different to a panel interview where they're just going to ask you some normal que some normal question, but just be ready that one of them is going to be a curveball or two of them is going to be a curveball and you're going to have to think on your feet. So have yeah. a pitcher of water ready, take a really long sip and think about your answer and try to, and try to do your best. Yeah. Those situational ones can be tough. Uh, guys look up top here. This, this is a resource for you. Get into dentalresidency.com where we actually help with the mock interviews. So situational questions. What do you do if, and they give you scenarios because you'll get that 
uh, sometimes, like Dr. Nicholas may uh, mention. But hey, Doc, I will tell you, what you've mentioned and what you've shared with us today is going to help somebody get into endo and become a board-certified endodontist. Uh, congratulations on your acceptance to Harvard. Uh, what's Thank the best you. way best way for people to contact you if they have any questions? Um, just the the email I gave you. Um, feel free to uh, feel free to give it to anybody that that has any question. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that email address is right up top here for those that are listening. What's the email address? It's uh, Nicholas Dot So. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna spell. I'm gonna spell it because I spell it in French. So it's N I C O L A S no H dot Wellet O U E L L E T at mail dot McGill dot C A. There you go. There you go. Uh, and here we go with the crew of people that are getting ready to apply to Endo, who are a little bit more better equipped uh, with the tools that they need to successfully apply. Thanks so much, Doc. Congratulations. No uh, it's been very helpful. And uh, hopefully, guys, check out these videos right here. Hopefully these videos will help you as well. And that's our time. Love, peace, and smile. We'll see you on the video next week. Next week. Next week. <laughs>